Hey, everybody, this is Chaney Morrow. You are watching Slasher Pepper with my boy Roger. Keep chilling and keep killing. Enjoy. <laughs> hey, guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another interview. Today, I'll be interviewing Chaney Morrow, who we all know from the movie Haunt and soon to be seen in the Wrong Turn reboot. How are you doing? Pretty good, Roger. How you doing, man? I'm doing awesome. I'm glad to have you on the show. Thanks a lot, man. It's good to be here. So um, my first question was, uh, 2020 is um, finally over. It seems like many people can agree that it wasn't the best year. Um, but how has 2020 been for you? <laughs> uh, well, 2020, you know, I, I hate to complain too hard about it because, you know, a lot of people, everybody was affected. Not one person wasn't. And, uh, you know, I don't want to complain because... I'm sure a lot of other people had it worse than me, you know. Exactly. But we did. I got to, uh, we were able to complete the film uh, on location, uh, even amidst the COVID dilemma. And uh, we're COVID compliant. Everybody got in and out safely. You know, that was, uh, that was great. That was good news. And, uh, oh man, you know, aside, uh, Aside from that, it, it wasn't uh, too bad of a year for me. You know, I, I really can't complain, man. Oh, yeah, me neither. For me, it was actually quite a good year. So I feel like um, I feel like some people, um, you know, I kind of took a turn a bit from what I usually do and then um, try to make the best of it. And honestly, I, I think I did a good job for myself. All right. Good. Good for you, man. For sure. Um and then, of course, you have On Location coming up um, to be released and um, the Wrong Turn movie. Besides those two, do you have any other new projects coming up? Uh, I actually, and this is a problem I thought for years, the kind of problem I wanted. But, you know, it's rare to, uh, to book two flicks at the same time. And uh, as 2020 would have it, uh, another film came up that was delayed, you know, all the same. And on location began, and then this other film called Movers Ultimate, uh, written and directed by Ben Rood, uh, they'd gotten a hold of me and offered me a, a role. And it, at first, you know, I was like, you know, absolutely. Uh, but when you find out that they're filming at the exact same time as on location, you know, hours and hours apart, it seemed unlikely that I, I'd be able to do it. But uh, Ben Rood, the uh, director, was really awesome and he worked with me man and uh, I was able to skirt away for a few days from on location to uh, film the movie Movers Ultimate which I forgot to bring that up that was another good thing of 2020 was I got to do that film also uh, it's yeah Movers Ultimate as far as I know that bad boy uh, should be out uh, this year probably I'm hoping probably roughly around the same time as on location we're thinking maybe april may something like that. and it's a uh, a raunchy fun comedy so it's a step step aside from what uh you know what i've been doing for sure <laughs> and um then and um, it's raunchy man it's raunchy it's a very r-rated you know film think like super bad wedding crash that, that kind of shit like it's it's right. it's rough it's realistic but it's i mean it's rough <laughs> sounds very promising yeah no I'm, I'm actually looking forward to seeing it man i uh i was only there uh two days but we had to get so much done in those two days um uh, that i didn't get as acclimated with the cast as you know i kind of like to be you know i like the right. camaraderie ship the camaraderie uh within you know making a film i think it's uh really helps the movie itself when it's when there's a good fair amount of chemistry and uh, camaraderie uh, together, but the, uh, the cast themselves, man, I didn't get to meet them uh, that, that long, but they're really good. The uh, director night, you know, he's enthusiastic and it's fun. I, I, I can't wait to see how people uh, take this, like seeing me in a comedy. That's awesome. I'll definitely be on the lookout for that. Yeah. But that right also, um, also reminds me of like uh, aliens, how James Cameron shot like the first scenes where they're all together like probably the last, that was like the last shooting day. So they would kind of have yeah. this band already as actors, you know, I think that's so smart. It's awesome. Yes, it is. It is. Um, 
And then to go back to one of your earlier films uh, that I think most people know you for, uh, what was it like filming Haunt? Oh, Haunt, man, that was... Haunt was, uh, like, opened the ground of opportunity for me, you know. Uh, it was incredible. The scale of it up to that point, like, uh, I was actually doing a play simultaneously, And I actually, I think ultimately that really helped my performance in the film. I mean, I was dead tired every night, but I was doing uh, King Lear, uh, Shakespeare at the time. So we would, and right as that was ending, or right as that, the, you know, we went up with that play, uh, I had to start Haunt. So I would do this show or do King Lear, drive down to Kentucky, which, you know, it's about an hour and some change from, it's not that far. And we would film there all night uh but the depth of you know like when i first walked onto the set the vast like the scale of it all and you keep in mind this is this was you know a fairly low budget flick which i mean i could only imagine <laughs> what you know a 40 million dollar movie with what that set is like but it was man it was jarring because i had i i i knew after like one night of filming that uh I knew it couldn't have just been me. I was like, man, this feels special. Like this, this doesn't feel like a, you know, you're like just a run of the mill slasher flick. It, uh, it felt good. They had a great cast of people and everybody wanted to be there. Everyone was so committed. And, uh, and I got to play, you know, a murderous monster, which, uh, it's just a blast. I recommend everybody does that at some point, uh, for fake, <laughs> you know, for fake to be, to be clear. Uh, But the Beck and Woods, man, the, just the whole experience. Uh, it, I learned a lot. And one of the things I learned was, yeah, this is exactly where I needed. This is exactly where I need to be, because it was a lifelong, you know, lifelong endeavor, man. To get anything I've gotten to this point was an absolute blessing. But it's something I've worked for uh, for a very long time uh, since I was a little, just you know, a little kid, far back as I can remember. I wanted to, you know do this stuff for a living um but haunt is uh, i've got nothing but just glorious memories from that man uh will Britton, the lead he's uh we became good buddies he's an absolute sweetheart very very gifted dude you keep an eye on him man because he's <laughs> he's gonna explode he's he's fantastic uh damien maffey who played the devil uh we've since done We've done a total of almost five movies together now. Yeah, he's uh, or um, after Haunt. So we we hit it off a pretty, you know, pretty fairly. It's two dudes with the same stuff in mind. You know, we're hard workers. We want to learn. We want to be great at what we're doing. You know, we fight to be as good as we can be. Uh, Justin Marks and the Clowns, wonderful guy. Beck and Woods are the sweetest, greatest dudes I've ever met that work behind the camera because they might as well be actors themselves. Like they're fantastic at directing an actor. You know, they don't really need to say much. They, they say exactly what they need to get what they want. And uh, they trust their actors a lot. And as an actor, we love that stuff. Like we love that they can trust our decisions. You know, that's great. It's, it can be scary when, uh, when, if you feel like all the choices you're making are not liked, you know, you feel like a quicksand thing coming on like, oh no, I don't belong here. <laughs> i'm a hack oh my god but those guys were wonderful and again two guys you got to keep an eye out for man because they they are gonna they're soon to be to me they are royalty now but they will go down as as a uh, hollywood uh, royalty just as filmmakers not even just for the genre awesome but haunt was magnificent i got nothing but great things to say about that well you you look a lot better than you did in a movie i can say that <laughs> thank you yeah that was wild man i uh, i had no clue what it was going to look like once it was on like i saw sketches and stuff and i had heard another actor compare his makeup to this once and it's very reminiscent gary oldman and the film hannibal as mason verger you remember he's all cut up and weird he said he'd spend hours in a makeup chair to look like a haunted butthole <laughs> Uh, and that's essentially what it looked like when I was like, I look like a warped butthole. <laughs> cool. And then they put the hair on, man, and it was, whew, it was, it was 
wild. Hard to hard to see in it, but I mean that just added to the fun. Yeah, yeah. for sure. They could have had a challenge. million guys do that, and they asked me, so I was, I tried to do as much as I possibly could. You know. Yeah, I thought it, that was such an interesting concept. Like also, um, uh, Damien's um, the devil, of course, with like the piercings and shit. Yeah, just, because you think they're just humans um, behind the mask, but then their entire face is just a whole different mask. You know, it's yeah. an awesome concept. And what would you say? I, um, I think they wanted to leave it kind of open, you know, like yeah, uh, for sure. create the suspense of the bad guys rather than delve into our backstory. You know, I think it's yeah, it's the theme of the movie. You know, it's about uh, Harper, the main girl, and overcoming uh, her fears and stuff. And just it's just a lovely, lovely little flick, man. I, mean, I, I could my jaw drops if I see it on TV. I'm like, damn, this is good. Wow, how did I? What? How did I get this? <laughs> Jeez, it's incredible <laughs> yeah for sure yeah and at first of course you think it's uh it's like the it's harper's boyfriend and then she's like um what was the boyfriend's name like sam sam and, yeah and damien's like who's sam <laughs> it's just that's that's my favorite line of the movie <laughs> i've told him that a million times my absolute favorite line of the movie is it's who's two sam? words <laughs> yeah who's sam? it's just his uh he could have said it a million ways, but only one way really made sense. And that's what he did. Like it was uh, yeah. fantastic to me. I, I thought he was, <laughs> I'm a big fan of his, you know, very big fan of that guy's. Yeah. He's I, like I, a you know, godfather to me. The guy's created so much opportunity for me that it'd take a lifetime to thank him. Yeah. He's, um, he, he was a great guy too. I interviewed him like when I started doing this kind of stuff. So like almost a year back, I would say. Yeah, he's, um, he's a wonderful guy, man. Real uh, solid dude, great father. You know, he's he's a he's in a you know guys like me look up to guys like him. You know, awesome. Yeah, he's he's working. He's very busy with uh, Times Up now. If I'm yeah, okay. which I just I just finished my bit on there uh, awesome. last week, and I wished God I could go back. <laughs> I hate being away when they're still working. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I want to play shit. <laughs> <laughs> but again, a wonderful cast there, man. Uh, LC Holt, Damien, Damien, uh, Hannah Fearman, uh, Jonathan Tierston from uh, the original Sleepaway Camp. Me and him hit it off pretty well. I was a big fan of that guy. I love that guy. Yeah, LC. It was, it was it was hard to leave. I missed my family like hell, but it, it was hard to leave because I had such a good time with them. I always do. Right. It's it's like vacation, like you. You want to go back, but you also want to stay at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Like I would dread the flight and would probably get homesick the second I was there. But <laughs> watching those guys create something like that, you know, out of just sheer passion is just all inspiring, man. It really is. Awesome. And um, then about one of your upcoming movies, can you tell us anything more about the upcoming uh, Wrong Turn movie? It's going to melt faces. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna melt faces uh well it's uh, they dropped the whole i think uh they dropped the title it was originally wrong turn the foundation uh but they dropped it just went back to regular wrong turn which you know that is what it is i personally really liked the foundation and the title i thought it set itself apart you know from from the other ones but Right. All in all, same writer from the original. Uh, it's got Mike Nelson, the writer-director from uh, The Domestics, which they couldn't have picked a better guy for this project because he he is gifted at the well. He's a well. He's a lot like Beck and Woods. Like he's super uh, interested. You know, he really loves the genre, and it comes out in his directing. Um, he's a great storyteller. Um, he cast it wonderfully. Uh, I, you know, got to spend most of my time in it with the, uh, you know, not the young, handsome people, uh, you know, our, our young, handsome cast. Uh, but I, I, I had a, a blast, man. I mean, every day there was, was it, the scale was a little bit bigger than, than Haunt. Um, but the way I look at it, man, I got to do what I love. I got to meet 
and hang out with Matthew Modine and Bill Sage. And, uh, well, hell, all of the entire cast was great. But it is going to melt faces, man. Like, if they think if they think that they know where this one's headed, they have no idea. <laughs> they have no idea. It really, it, it does, it's great at separating itself from the other films while keeping that, you know, that, like, healing the same not even the same characters man like it's it's really i wish i uh was <laughs> a better orator uh, about this but uh people are really gonna like it because it's not i don't want to give anything away but it's nothing like you know the last four or five of them thank god no <laughs> offense to them they were just you know their own kind of thing this is uh it's just a whole new level man it's a whole new level and if we talk in franchise, man, who knows? Because uh, all the ingredients are there. So, but what the hell do I know? You know, they don't tell me shit. I'm just a, I'm just an actor, you know. Well, again, uh, that sounds really, really promising. <laughs> I really do, man. I think people are, uh, people are going to like it a lot. Awesome. Uh, I'm actually, I mean, I'm really stoked to see it. I can't wait to see it on the big screen just because, as a fan, I've seen them all, and I think this offers, you know, a hell of a re-envisioning of the whole story of the woods. You know. Fantastic. Um, and then my next question, you mentioned you've watched all of the Wrong Turn movies. Now, I'm not sure if those are some of your favorites, but uh, what are some of your favorite horror movies? Well, man, my absolute favorite of all time is uh, The Thing. Uh, Carpenter's the thing. Right. Uh, nothing against the original. You know, I've watched that too. It's just, you know, a little dated. Guy looked like a giant carrot. Uh, <laughs> so it didn't, you know, it doesn't have quite the same effect of Rob Bottin's, uh effects. Oh, yeah. Uh, or, you know, the wonderful acting. Just to me, the thing is a perfect, is like the gold standard of horror. It's got everything I like in a horror film. A great cast, great story, good tension fucking incredible monsters and an ending that you know you're not given a yes or no on right you know, kind of left open um carpenter is probably my favorite um the original wrong turns a classic man i mean the original is is fantastic oh, yeah. and hell part two is great too i love joe lynch's that was a lot of fun a little different than the first but a lot of fun and they yeah, just got kind of too sexual after that man <laughs> i mean everyone after that was just tits or sex and just murder you know it was like saw but with more sex right <laughs> and i think they just they're like okay okay we we beat that horse do we got any other ideas you know because horror these past couple of years has been getting better and better or something that people call elevated horror which to quote beck and woods i think that's kind of bullshit they're like it's horror we don't need to elevate it just tell a fucking good story you know exactly. tell a good story let's not uh you know, we're not making Schindler's List here. Like this, it's, it's, it's a horror film. We know that, but there's a way within the parameters of that genre to tell an effective story. I mean, Jordan Peele, Ari Aster, these guys do it all the time. And sometimes without even a drop of blood. So, you know. Yeah. Got, uh, where, I was, uh, where I was headed, but uh, uh, big, Kruger, <laughs> big, big, big Freddy Krueger fan. You know, I love all oh, horror. Yeah. It's, it's rare that I will find a horror movie and I just hate it. It's pretty rare because like I'll watch plenty of bad horror movies, like the ones that, you know, aren't good that we find enjoyable, but we know they're not good. I'll take a chance on one of those before like, you know, a heavily rated drama. My only reason is good or bad a horror flick is always enjoyable or at least funny now if yep. a drama falls flat you tend to hate it if a comedy is not funny you tend to fucking hate it you know you turn against oh, it was so not funny i'm so disappointed with horror if it's bad it's bad i still it's still 90 minutes of a fucking good time so yeah whatever it's definitely probably my favorite genre though i'd never heard i didn't go to school to be a horror actor you know, that wasn't a, a class, uh, <laughs> but it is, I mean, a lot of fun, man. A lot of fun. Like I came from the theater. So costumes are, 
big to me. I love a costume. And with the bad guy, there's so much there that you can literally disappear within it. it doesn't justify shitty behavior on a set, obviously, but you can disappear within it and really, you know, it's all, it's what people are seeing you as. So it's easy to play to that. You know, like, you don't know what I really look like. So. Right. You know, I could be James Dean or fucking Elvis for all you know. I'm not. <laughs> What are some of your uh, favorite like bad horror movies then? Like, are you oh, saying Frankenhooker or Sharknado? That kind of. Well, Sharknado. Uh, uh, in terms of bad horror, like Sharknado, Piranaconda, Mega Shark versus Octopus, the sci-fi movie. I don't even waste my time on those. Yeah, me neither. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm like, yeah, I get it, but they're like making fun. Like, I hate yeah. to poking fun of them. It, not those, but uh, let's say there's a uh, franchise from back in the day that I actually started watching like at my first apartment when I was 18. It was called uh, Scarecrow. And they ended up making like three or four of them. <laughs> but damn it, if I didn't rent every single one, because <laughs> uh, I think Tiffany Shepis, who I, you know, I had a little crush on when I was younger. She's lovely. Uh, he was in it and they just kept coming out. So I kept renting them, man, two, three, four. <laughs> they were bad, but they didn't take themselves too seriously. And they weren't like a parody of right. themselves either. Like Sharknado is it's mm -hmm. like almost too meta with such a shitty budget. You know, yeah. <laughs> like you can't be so self-realized if it's the same gag every single movie, the same gag every time. Flying sharks like Jesus. Okay. We, we found it. a cure for this yet? <laughs> or you've had like nine movies to find a way to stop this. And now we got the guy from 90210 who's uh thinks he's like fucking Ash or something. <laughs> <laughs> thinks he's Ash Williams of, of shark killing. Uh, no offense, uh I I don't know what his name is. Uh, no offense, guy. Get in where you fit in. I I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah, but uh, Scarecrow, love that one. Uh, ooh. Uh, I think this film kind of gained some, uh, like, some fans over the years, but when it first came out, it was so low budget. I don't think anybody took it seriously, but it's a perfect example of how you can do something good with fucking zero money. It's called Mulberry Street. I've never heard of that. Good flick, man. Really good. No money. Uh, good performances. Effective. Jim Mickle did it. He's since done bigger movies. Um, that's a great one. Uh, and there's there's so much good stuff out there. And the best part about horror is it seems to be like that's what people make the most of. So you're never without a selection. There's always a horror. Oh movie. yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can't watch dramas over and over, man. They they they're emotionally draining. Like, could you imagine what like. I can only watch Schindler's List like maybe once a decade. <laughs> you know, those heavy dramas, man, they, they get to me, honestly. And it's funner and easier to just stick with horror flicks, you know, because the better the film, the longer they last in, in my head, which is a good thing. That's what you want to happen. But, you know, Monster's Ball or Calvary, Schindler's List, Snow Angels, movies like that, they just, whoo. They like they get me dark inside. Like I feel so I feel so dark afterwards. Like man, that's yeah. brutal. Nowadays, if you want to feel dark, you you might as well read the news. You know, so exactly. <laughs> Jesus, or just get on Facebook. God, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, everybody got something to say on there. Like you want to be bummed out, spend ten minutes on Facebook. That's all you need. Yeah, or Twitter, even worse probably. <laughs> Twitter, yeah. Oh yeah, I have. I have my fun with both, you know, but I don't, I don't, I would never use social media to piss anybody off, you know? Right. Why, why, why would I do that? I want to be pissed off. Like, well, I'll do that in person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hide behind my keyboard. Exactly. <laughs> I wish more people had that mentality. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, I get, you know, there's uh, people want to vent and stuff. That's the easiest, quickest way to do it without facing you know, uh, frontal circum or frontal consequences for it, you know, but I mean, I, I get it. I get it. I just, I learned over time that, you know, 
doing the Facebook thing. Well, if you're an influencer, I, an influencer, I understand it, but you know, I'm not, and I'd prefer not to be. I, if I could influence people to watch more horror movies, I would. <laughs> yeah. That's the influence I want to have. Watch more horror movies. <laughs> Lighten up a little bit, you know? <laughs> well, you can officially put horror influencer in your bio because I'm going to go out and watch watch the Scarecrow movies now because they sound like a lot of fun. <laughs> they are super silly, but man, they are. They're fun. I told you, I, I rent like they just like one a year. They kept coming out. So it's like, oh, hey, shit. <laughs> Part four has Ken Shamrock. All right, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> but yeah, but those those are fun, man. The Scarecrow awesome. movies, they're silly. They're silly good fun. Definitely check them out. Um, and then here are two more random questions. The first one is, um, if you could rid the world of one thing, what would it be? Can it be a person? <laughs> sure <laughs> uh, if i could rid the world of one thing um uh, damn that's a good question uh, if i could rid the world of one thing the first thing that comes to my mind is just hate you know if i could get rid of any form of hate that goes beyond like, you know, just an argument or even like a fist fight, anything beyond that, you're like, just come on. I mean, that's a corny answer, but. Uh, well, it's actually funny you say that because that's my answer. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man. Boom. <laughs> Boom, bro. If we could, yeah, just, if I just get rid of the, the hate. <laughs> I mean, with so everybody get, get along a little better, you know, exactly. What are they, what are the odds? And you also get rid of, like, your answer could also be, like, uh, get rid of racism. But, like, racism kind of is a form of hate, so. Yes, it is. No, absolutely. And, yes, that definitely ties in. We could get past all the superficial bullshit and kind of realize that we need each other. Exactly. We do. Like, we are humans. At, at the end of the day, if shit hits the fan, we're going to need each other. For sure. I always keep that in mind, man. Always. Even if I get pissed off or angry, you know, uh, it's just, it's baggage, man. It's, uh takes up too much of your time being hateful about shit. If you don't like it, just carry on. <laughs> yeah, good advice. Then yeah. um, next question. Um, if you, if you were in control of the world, what would the world look like? One big ass haunted house. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> one big haunted house with uh, some houses for the kids, some houses for the teens, and some houses for the adults. <laughs> but either way, we'd have a good time. And it would be aesthetically humorous and fun. Awesome. <laughs> well, it sounds like the world would be a lot better if you were in control of it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, maybe, maybe. <laughs> and then uh, final question what's some advice you would like to give to young and upcoming actors nothing will happen overnight uh, it requires I mean and not to say that some people didn't get overnight success you know but for guys like me and where you know where I'm coming from it's gonna be a almost a fight against yourself. Um, don't give up. The role you've been waiting on is closer than you think. You just cannot stop. You can't let your heart slip. You, you have to keep it there because uh, there's anything I learned back when I thought about giving up uh, you know, before haunt and all that, uh, all that great stuff. When I thought about giving up, I realized that the pain of not doing it would be far greater than, you know, the resentment and disappointing, like the disappointing aftermath of like auditions was you get used to being rejected. 
But what you can't get used to is not having that passion in your life. So it won't happen overnight, but the role you want is around the corner. Uh, you just got to, and you got to bust your ass and uh, hope for the best. You, you got to put yourself, you got to work hard enough to be in a position to where you can get lucky. It is a lot of luck in this business, but you have to really bust your ass to get into that room of people that can be lucky. That's the one thing I've learned. That and the cost of not doing it far outweighs the rejection therein. Wow. That's so keep awesome to it, guys. Answer, if any young actors, man, by any advice to just keep with it. What you want is there. Just just keep on trying. And you'll fucking thank me the day it happens, I promise. Or you'll at least think about it. And they'll be like, yep, he, he was right. And that's the same case for me, any other actor I know. You know, we you just... You got to go through, you got to walk on coals, walk through hell to get there. And it, it doesn't solve everything once you are there, but it's a hell of a start, man. It's a hell of a good start. And after that, just be kind. Just be kind to people. I mean, it's again, in this business, we need each other. You know, you do a good job. You make friends, opportunities come around. Just never forget why you wanted to do it to begin with, which is because you love it and you can't live without it. Awesome, dude. That's that's like the best answer I've gotten to that question yet. That's amazing. Oh, thanks, man. I almost want to give you an applause now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, is there anything uh, you would like to add to the interview? Uh, check out Wrong Turn uh, coming out in theaters on uh, one night only on January 26th. Uh, keep your eyes out for On Location. And uh, there's currently a crowdfunding campaign going on for a um a show an animated show with me damian maffey felissa rose tiffany Sheppis, joe lynch mark Patton, dave sheridan uh, it's called happy slashers it's currently being crowdfunded if you guys like warped ass funny animation about your favorite murderous bad guys in therapy uh <laughs> Then yeah, throw in, donate. Let's make this bad boy happen. Aside from that, uh, I love you guys. Keep killing, keep chilling. Awesome. Well, um, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll put the links to all the crown footings and all the social media in the description, and we'll see you guys next time. See ya. Absolutely. You're pissing me off, Roger.